Welcome to our lecture online, and here's an example of how to work with absolute value inequalities. Here's an example. Um, the first thing you want to do here is recognize what strategy you want to use there. So either it is less than some number or it's greater than some number. If it's less than some number, then this will follow between the negative and positive of that number. If it says greater than, then you have to divide into two separate inequalities and solve them that way. So you always have to recognize the difference. So this one right here can be rewritten as negative one-sixth is less than or equal to the quantity within the absolute value symbol, which is less than or equal to the positive of that number. So this can be rewritten to be like this. And then, of course, you want to solve this for x in such a way that in the middle only have x, everything else is gone. I would say that the first thing we want to do probably is multiplying everything by 6 because that will get rid of the fractions, the denominators. So let's do that. So we have minus 1 sixth less than or equal to 2 thirds x plus 1 half less than or equal to 1 sixth. Notice I left some room because that way I can go like this, multiply this by 6, multiply this by 6, and multiply this by 6. Remember, you have to do the same to everything on both sides of the inequality symbols. All right. Once we do that, we end up with negative 1, less than or equal to uh, 6 times this gives us uh, 4x plus 3, less than or equal to 1. Okay, the next thing we want to do is, and I guess I should have left myself just a little bit more room over here. Let me write that as minus 1. Now I'm going to subtract 3 everywhere, so I'm writing minus 3, minus 3, minus 3. When I do that, I get minus 4 less than or equal to 4x, which is less than or equal to minus 2. Okay, and now I can go ahead and divide everything by 4. And then we end up with negative 1, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to minus 1 half. So this tells me that x must be between negative 1 and negative 1 half. If we put that on the number line, if this is 0, this is negative 1, this is negative 1 half. We can see that it includes the endpoints, negative 1 and negative 1 half. So I draw filled in circles that in indicates that it includes the endpoints and everything in between, like so. And so the solution set is between negative 1 and negative 1 half, all values of x. All right, so that's how you do a problem like that.